Welcome back. I want to give you a quick news update that came in during the commercial break. We've been reporting on the Uranium One deal slash scandal took place in 2010 during the Obama administration when a Russian company took control of a huge percentage of our uranium reserves. At that time, as we've told you, there was a federal investigation, Justice Department investigation into bribery, uh, Russians bribing Americans to get that deal through, and there was an informant at the center of that. He has not been allowed to speak to Congress. He's under a gag order. That gag order has ended about five minutes ago. The Justice Department announcing he will be allowed to speak to congressional committees, so expect more news on that story. Now, author Sasha polakov saransky says a specter is haunting the West, the specter of white nationalism. In his new book, Go Back to Where You Came From, the backlash against immigration and the fate of Western democracy. polakov saransky says the biggest threat to democracy isn't jihadism or mass immigration from non-Western societies. Instead, the greatest threat, he says, is right-wing politicians exploiting public hostility to new arrivals. And that, he says, will destroy free society. Sasha polakov saransky joins us tonight. Sasha, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, Tucker. So, I, I mean, I guess the 30,000-foot the question is, can you be surprised that when you change an, uh, a society as old as a European society, or even one as old as ours, completely through immigration in a short period of time, that some people won't like it and that there will be a backlash against it? Does that surprise you? I'm not, surpri I'm not surprised at all, Tucker, and I don't believe in absolute open borders, and I absolutely understand why people are unsettled, why they're resentful, and why they're upset. I've reported right. in Germany and France and Holland and Denmark, people are angry about how their neighborhoods are changing, and they have legitimate grievances and legitimate fears, and often parties on the center left and on the left haven't listened to them for years. So I get why people are resentful. What I'm concerned about and what worries me is that we have a new group group of politicians in far-right populist parties that are exploiting those fears and those grievances and those resentments to take our societies back a hundred years and in a very dangerous direction. And when I say that white nationalism is a greater threat than jihadists, I'm acknowledging that terrorism is a huge threat to our societies, but great democracies persevere and they manage. Look at the UK, look at France after the attacks, look at us after 9-11, but if insiders within our societies nativist politicians start to stir hatred and resentment towards immigrant groups and refugee groups. We know where that has taken us in the past, Tucker, and it's dangerous and it's divisive. And yeah. I think that we need leaders and a news channel that will come out and unequivocally, swiftly and forcefully condemn those ideas whenever they emerge. Yeah, I think your point is hysterical and silly. Part of it, part of it is real. I mean, part of what you're saying is is, to is totally real. No, you're right. I mean, there has been a rise in nationalism around the world, and it's reaction against. So it doesn't against... bother you, Tucker, that people like David Duke, the former Klan leader, comes out and says that da he sees da David himself David Duke and his is. Followers. See, th this is the part that makes me he take you less than less. Hold on, let me finish. It's hard to take you seriously when you take David Duke seriously, who was a marginal figure with no power over anyone. And so when you hold him up as some sort of hard of the future, I know you're ridiculous. Whereas a second ago, you actually kind of had me listening intently when you said, Tucker, but this is what's like happening David in Europe. Duke because it and is. Richard Spencer have emerged into the public square. We need okay. to have a debate about immigration in this country, and I think you and I agree about that, but David Duke should not have any part in that debate. But, but he doesn't, saying, actually. And what you're doing in fear-mongering like this is shutting, is shutting down that debate, actually. I but mean, Tucker, isn't what enough? happened in Charlottesville, what happened in Gainesville a few days ago when people fired into a crowd of protesters, doesn't that scare you? Isn't that a threat to our country well, what, and our I mean, I guess, I guess what you're looking at is a completely myopic picture of what's actually happening. You're seeing a lot of drama because there's massive social change in this country. It's coming from all directions, and some of the directions are not even possible to understand. But it's not as simple as the rise of white nationalism. It's that you get a volatile society when you change it overnight, and you don't give people a chance to weigh in on whether they like it or not. Like, it's really simple, no? People should absolutely have a chance to weigh in, Tucker, but what I am talking about is politicians who exploit those fears. It's one thing to say, in Germany, for instance, we can't take in one million immigrants in one year. That's impossible to integrate no matter how rich and how so good your intentions. what do you think you're going to get? I agree with that. I agree with that. But when politicians emerge in a country like Germany that has a history of genocide, it 
causes concern. So, there Sergeant, a member we're, we're, the, I got 10 Tucker, seconds, but whose fault is let that? Why aren't Tucker. you blaming Angela Merkel for this? She did it, but she it gets a pass somehow? It is the fault of manipulative and opportunistic right. politicians who are emerging to Merkel stoke right people's there. fears. All right, we're out of time. Thank you for that. That was interesting.